Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to do some kind of hardware modification or hack or just doing something uh, useful hopefully. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make a new power supply cable for my TS100 soldering iron. I'm actually using another uh, soldering station, the KSGER T12 uh, soldering station. But uh, since I have also this soldering iron, I decided to kind of uh, mod it and make a proper uh, power supply cable for it. The reason for that is because I've been using it with a very bad old power supply. Well, it's not that bad, but could be better. So as you can see, this is an adjustable power supply and it can be adjusted between 9 to 24 volts. And the maximum power which it can provide is 3 amps. And in fact, according to the data which is written on the side of this uh, soldering iron, uh, it can supply it from 12 to 24 volts and then the wattage or power rating here is going from 17 to 65 watts. So actually 24 volts at 3 amps it should be more than sufficient for this uh, soldering iron but then I thought that yeah okay this uh, power supply which I showed you recently is just at the boundary but uh, it's a general rule of thumb that you should never really run a power supply uh, close to its maximum ratings therefore I decided to get another power supply which is a very cheap uh, switching power supply so this is a 24 volts and 5 amps power supply and this uh, is relatively compact of course its size is double of this uh, other power supply as you can see but uh, maybe the size also comes with a better uh, reliability in addition to a better or higher performance and uh, last but not least this thing is grounded and this thing is not grounded so that might also come with some uh, benefits if we are using a grounded power supply so therefore I will replace my power supply to this and for this power supply I bought this uh, fancy cable this is usually used for irons you know the thing that you use to straighten your clothes uh, so this is a grounded connection and actually this covering or this kind of sleeve is kind of heat resistant to a certain extent uh, so it can be good for our purpose and then another important uh, stuff here will be this very very flexible uh, cable as you can see I can uh, tie a knot on it uh, very easily and uh, it's, it's very flexible it comes with two uh, cores and uh, a feature of this cable is that uh, the external covering part is heat resistant which is of course is very good for this application so I will do that and then uh, finally I bought a bit more fancy uh, power uh, DC jack so this is the exact same uh, dimensions which is written here and the exact same uh, let's say parameters so this goes in very smoothly and then uh, it comes out nicely it has a very nice snug fit and this particular uh, DC uh, barrel connector or barrel jack connector has 6 amps uh, operational current rating which is good for our uh, purpose and then another nice uh, feature of this thing is that here you can actually cut the end of this thing at a certain uh, cable diameter and this uh, outer diameter if I squeeze this cable a little bit is at 5 millimeters in, in, in diameter so I can use it with this uh, this kind of ending here and then uh, yeah it's just uh, some other things like this uh, heat shrink tube uh, is here which I will use and I will also use some of these connectors just to connect uh, the other end of this cable to the power supply properly and then uh, if you don't want to go for a very fancy 
cable of course you can use this uh, really cheap uh, guy here but i do not recommend it because uh, you want to transfer higher currents higher power and it worth to invest in a proper connector like like this so i will measure a proper distance and we just uh, carry on but before doing that uh, let's see if this power supply works uh, in fact, I have never tried this power supply, so I'm just going to wire it up and uh, we test uh, the outlet voltage. And then here, as you can see, that tiny orange thing, that is a potentiometer, which you can use to adjust uh, the voltage of this uh, thing. So I will put this together. Uh, I mean, I will attach the cables and then power it on. And we will see if you need to adjust the output voltage or not. So before connecting, hopefully you can see how we have the wires uh, here or the terminals. So live, neutral, ground, and then two terminals here are V minus. So the negative output voltage, the regulated voltage, and then V plus V plus. Uh, so I will just connect the cables. And if you don't know, I also have to Google it sometimes because I just simply forget it. Brown is the live uh, cable, blue is the neutral cable, and this double colored cable, yellow, green is the ground. So let's just uh, connect it and let's see if it works. So I plugged it in and I can see a small uh, LED there. So let's see the voltage. and 24.28 uh, which is nice but i think i will uh, adjust it a little bit just to be sure that i'm not uh, overloading my soldering iron so let's see so according to my multimeter 23.98 of course all these devices should have some tolerances but uh, better to be safe than sorry so uh, let's keep it like this so these things seem to work so let's move on to the cable for this soldering iron so i cut out a reasonable amount of cable and then i fixed it like this so it is easier to work with the two ends and then uh, after i'm satisfied with the terminals and the connectors i just uh, snip this uh, zip tie here and i can work with the uh, cable properly so first of all let's uh, use these tiny terminals uh, which will be connected to the power supply so let's prepare that side first so I haven't mentioned but the diameter of this cable is 0 0.5 uh, square millimeter or not the diameter sorry but the cross-section area so 20 AWG uh, which might be a little bit under the size, but uh, keep in mind that uh, this always goes in a sleep mode. So even if you keep it on, it will never be used uh, on the maximum performance. And uh, it is always trying to use the least amount of power. And it's not running continuously. So I'm not expecting too much uh, power to go through this for an extended period of time. So therefore, I would say that uh, it's an acceptable uh, diameter. But of course, if you want to be a bit more safe, uh, you can use, let's say, 18 or 17 AWG around one uh, square millimeter of cross section area. And that should be more than sufficient for like uh, continuous running at 5 amps and 24 volts.
So the power supply on this is done, as you can see. Uh, the crimp doesn't look nice because uh, the sleeve part of this thing, which is being crimped, is a bit too large for this cable diameter, but uh, it does the job and I tested it, pulling it, and it holds the wire and compresses the wire properly. So uh, it holds it properly. And now comes the more difficult part because I have to prepare this cable for this uh, DC plug and its uh, housing. So as I said, uh, there are some markings on this uh, plug, which actually suggests us where to cut uh, according to the diameter of this wire. So I will cut at 5 and I will try to see if I can squeeze the cable through and if it works then I will just uh, measure this uh, cable where I should cut it and so on and I will do the cutting and then soldering. So it seems like 5 is not enough and we still have one last ring here, so I will cut that. Hopefully not destroy this thing too much. So now it's done. And the cable goes in. Of course, this won't be the nicest thing, but uh, this is what we can do now. So coming back to this uh, TS100 uh, soldering iron, uh, according to the pictogram here, this is a center positive DC jack, which means that here we have the center with this eyelet here. Uh, so that has to be connected to the positive or in my case, the red uh, wire. So I will connect that to the red wire and obviously the other wire, the black one goes here. Uh, which is the negative side of this thing. So now I have my other soldering iron with very nice colors as you can see and uh, I will use it with uh, this uh, DC jack and try to solder it uh, together. So for the red cable, the goal was to fill up the entire hole and I can see that the solder comes out on the other side. So that is nice. And I also wanted to kind of immerse uh, the rest of the wire because then I can snip it more easily. And here we also covered the hole on both sides and immerse the part of this or soaked it. Uh, so now I can cut it short. So it seems more or less fine. So then the sleeve comes back on this metal part. And it should go all the way to this uh, goo or notch. So after some uh, trial and error, I could put this on. And now comes uh, the last part, which is this black uh, cover here. And this went more smoothly than the other. So now we have this uh, revealed part at the end and I already tried this. This goes on very, very nicely.
So now I have this very, let's say, professional looking uh, power cable. It looks like those overpriced and not really functional uh, speaker cables. So there you go. You can make your own overpriced speaker cable in like 20 minutes. So then let's uh, test the uh, soldering iron with this. And then I plug this thing in. First try, so it works. And if I turn this on, put 24 watts. Hopefully you can see it. And we reached the goal temperature. And now it is going down to five watts of power. So at 24 watts, five watts is nothing. So this seems fine. So I open up the cable and I just see how flexible this cable is. Yeah, I guess it's very, very flexible. And one more test which I can do on these uh, cut pieces is to see if this is heat resistant and it is. I'm holding it in my hand and if I don't burn through it and if I don't burn my hand that means that this is heat resistant. Uh, sorry for the beeping, the other uh, soldering iron was complaining but yeah you can see and th this is on okay now it's at 170 but let's go up uh, 320 and it is not burning the cable uh, covering so we accept this as a good uh, cable material and I think it looks very sleek I would say it's very very flexible uh, if you will go to my website you will find some uh, extra pictures of this uh, assembly let's say because maybe it's interesting to see some other features so yeah so this was the whole video i just wanted to have some fun and i wanted to assemble a new set of cable uh, for this other ts100 uh, soldering iron so now we have this nice uh, red uh, cable and now I have a new thing. I started a Patreon. So if you want to support my work and if you find it useful and uh, worthy for support, then please check the link in the description and you can go to my Patreon. And actually there will be a lot of benefits of using uh, Patreon because I will upload a lot of, uh, let's say behind the scenes pictures or I will write something, uh, an extra article about some interesting topics, or I will provide uh, the extra source codes for my uh, projects. So you will not have to uh, copy paste it uh, from the video, but you can download it and copy paste it like that. And many other uh, things that I just cannot remember of. So yeah, visit my website, visit my Patreon page, and uh, try to see if you find something interesting there. So I hope that this video was uh, useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.